So one of the things I do in my downtime is I like to watch movies. Like, I wouldn't necessarily describe myself as a movie buff or anything like that, but I do enjoy watching movies. Oftentimes it's just movies that intrigue me. One of the ways to hook me into a movie is to tell me it's a true story or even based on a true story. And I love documentaries. And I was recently watching a documentary about uh, the fast food industry. And one of the things the fast food industry did to increase sales. And what they did was they did a lot of research on words and how to use words to create what the fast food industry refers to as health halos and a word with a health halo is um like crispy so and if you notice sometimes you'll go to a a restaurant like a fast food restaurant and it'll say like crispy chicken salad because the word crispy has a health halo that the word fried doesn't so if i were to say like here's a salad and i gave you and i and there are bits of fried chicken on top of it it sounds like an unhealthy salad but if I were to say, here's a salad and there's crispy chicken on top of it, it doesn't sound as unhealthy. They refer to that as a health halo. And there are many health halos that the fast food industry has identified. But one of the things that stood out to me as I was watching this, it made me start thinking, like, I wonder what words in a solution-focused context or in, the, in, in sessions that, that we conduct as professionals have um, hope halos. Right, so, so what's the difference when someone comes into your office and they tell you about a really difficult thing they've been through recently, right? Like, last week was really hard, my, my husband and I had this big old fight and argument, or my child continues to misbehave and break rules. If I were to say something like, gosh, that sounds really terrible, um, tell me about the details of that argument, uh, it's very likely that the person is going to have to struggle a bit as they talk about the details of an argument. Most of us don't like going into details of problems and they cause us harm. But if I were to do something associated with a hope halo, like this new term that I super love, right? This hope halo, if someone says, um, me and my partner had this big old argument last week and I'm really struggling. If I say something like, so how do you get through this argument? or what's still intact about your relationship after this argument that you're pleased with. What do you know about you and your partner that lets you know you may be able to get through this difficult time? See, those questions have the embedded belief that there is something still positive and something still strong and something still worthwhile about this relationship. Those questions engender hope those questions engender belief those questions demonstrate that as a professional i am aware of and acknowledge that yes things may be difficult but amazingly things are still true and positive between you and your partner and it's really important that when we're doing solution focused brief therapy we make sure that our questions and our words are packed with hope you know, it's funny, the, the, the fast food industry realized when we use these words that have hope, that have health halos, um, their sales went way up, even though they didn't change the recipe, like the food didn't get healthier, they just described the food in a healthy way and it led to more sales. So it makes me wonder, if you can ask questions that help the client describe themselves in a hopeful way, what would happen to them?